today let's talk uh, about anemones. Been feeling so small, watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Anemones. Anemones are like little bags with water. Let's put it that simple. But technically, they are cnidarians. Cnidarians because they have these stinging cells that stung the prey and then they are able to grab it with the tentacles. The tentacles are full of stinging cells. Then they drag the prey into their mouth and they eat them. They also use zooxanthella like the corals to get energy from uh, you know from the light. So you don't really have to be stressing about feeding them. You know, you get this question all the time. If you want, you can feed them. They will grow faster. They will start multiplying faster. Whatever you feed to your fish, usually the flow will also take it into them. Same way you feed some of your corals, the flow will bring them the food. You don't have to stress about it. Be careful not to feed too much because your phosphates and nitrates are going to go up and then these anemones they don't like it too high. You have to be, be very careful about, about the water chemistry. If you're in doubt if you can have an anemone, if you keep conditions uh, right for the corals, the anemones will do well because you got all the right parameters. Pretty much corals are a bone structure, a skeleton with a bunch of small anemones. That's what it is, just polyp. An anemone is a massive polyp, if you want to put it that way. Now, the first sign that the anemone will show when he's under stress is it will release the foot. So the base of the anemone is like a muscle and they use that muscle to grab into the rocks or the glass. But they grab strongly into the rocks, hiding the column and only having exposed the oral disc, which is full of tentacles that are full of nematocysts, which will stun whatever fish or whoever wants to go there. So they are protecting themselves. So if conditions are not right, you have the capacity of moving, right? By using that uh, muscle, that base, that foot. So they can move around, find a new spot where conditions are better, right? Now, if you have a reef tank, just move your corals away from the enemy. Don't stress out, oh, it's going to steal my, sting my corals. If, if it's a little frag, probably it's going to die. If it's a colony, it will sting a part of the colony and then the coral will just grow the other way. And enemies and corals will fight with each other. Corals also have those stinging cells, nematocysts. So, you know, it is what it is. Depends how much you really care about the coral or the anemone. Now, the anemone is the hard thing to place because she will, she will choose the spot. So what I let, what I do, I let the anemone swim around find her sweet spot and then just move the corals around it. If they are glued or epoxy, just put a knife, twist, comes out, glue it somewhere else. That's it, easy. Conditions are changing, water chemistry is getting bad, the enemy will move around. That's a sign of stress. Second sign of stress when conditions are getting really bad. It will release the food, will inflate, I mean it will swallow more water, so it's more buoyant, right? And then in the wild, they hope that the flow will just take them, some, the current will just take them somewhere else where conditions are a lot better. And then they will attach in that area. So in the fish tank, small volume, they try to go somewhere else, but they cannot go because the water is still there, it's the same water. So you want to test the water, make sure everything is fine. And if it's not, which most likely is not, change the do a water change. The third level of stress, they will start opening their mouth and trying to get their mesenteric filaments. I'm getting a bit technical now. Mesenteric fil filaments are what they use to digest prey. So they put that out to see if they can kill in a desperate attempt to whatever is stressing it. They don't think, it's just very simple animals. So they put all that out to see if they will uh, sting or improve this situation. In this case, might be most likely water chemistry. 
it is water chemistry so in that point they are really really doing bad so they might just end up dying that's like the less resource that they can do so if your enemy has the mouth closed it uh, has a very strong grip, oral disc is out, column is hiding, the anemone is happy. Just move corals around, that's it. Several kinds of anemones, some of Condylactus for example are from the Caribbean, so the regular Nemo's clownfish can, will not host it. Because they have extra nematocysts, where we find the little ocellaris, the little Nemo's clowns, we usually have Eteractis magnifica, which is this anemone. Right here, which is this anemone. They love that anemone. It does get a little, it does get big, but it is what it is. So, they create this social thing in between them where the more dominant, the big female, dominant female will stay more in the center, the less dominant male will stay in the perimeter or under the anemone. Now you can also use bubble tips, you can use, lo use long tentacles, the regular ocellaris or nemos will, uh, will host it. Now carpet anemones, they have a strong density of metals, so they, have a really, they are more predatorial, so if a fish hits them, they most likely cannot escape from those uh, grabby nematocysts. The same thing with all anemones, they have the capacity of catching a fish if a fish is dumb enough to swim against them and get tangled with the tentacles. So they can swallow it, the, the base will extend, it will close, so that's one sign. The first one will be, if you want something a little bit smaller, bubble tips, long tentacles are very good, uh, sea bay anemones are very good also, if you have a large tank. I highly recommend the uh, Magnificas, the Tractis Magnifica, amazing. Other species of clowns like sea bays, tomatoes, maroons, they will host something like, uh, they will host Condylactus, which is the Haitian anemones or Caribbean anemones. They will also host, host uh, carpet anemones. So they're, they're a little bit more eclectic regarding the anemones versus ocellaris. It's also a different type of clownfish, much bigger you know, a little bit more, a stronger clown, I shall say. The other, and a quick tip, the foot or the base of an enemy is just so important that if it's damaged, usually it all gets infected and then it ends up dying. You gotta make sure you buy it with intact, uh, with the base intact. Now, on an enemy, there's mini carpets, there's just small enemies, there's also, uh, rock anemones or flower anemones those ones clowns will not host they will not host those ones those ones are more like as a decoration and those ones usually they don't really move that much but also pay attention when you're buying one rose one rock anemone or flower anemone check their foot make sure it's not damaged because if it's damaged gets infected and everything dies so um that's a few tips all right see you tomorrow
don't see the same thing It's time that we just let it die Oh, I can find a higher 